Hello and welcome to the Air Gun Show. Now you might be watching this and thinking, oh blimey, Matt Manning has let himself go. But if you saw the last episode, you'll realise that he's actually moved on to pastures new. And we wish him all the very, very best of luck. So for this episode, you'll have to put up with me. Now later in the programme, I'm going to be taking a look at a brand new rifle that's being launched today. It is the Brokok BRK Ghost. But first, I'm going to take it out hunting for squirrels and rats. I'm down on my chicken farm permission again today. Now, I come down here an awful lot to shoot the rats and for some reason the rat population this year has really exploded and I'm down here most weeks trying to keep a lid on the numbers. And in actual fact, later on tonight, I'm gonna to go up to the yard with my mate Kev and try and shoot a few more. But to start with, I'm hopefully gonna be dealing with some gray squirrels. Now, they're not normally a problem on the farm, to be honest, but there's a population in the cops on the right-hand side here. And every now and then the numbers get to the point where they start trying to nest in the roof space of some tenant cottages on the other side. And you really don't want squirrels in your roof because by chewing through pipes and cables and wires, they can be very destructive and even present a fire risk. So that's the plan to start with. Now there's vehicles moving around the estate all the time and I'm banking on the fact that the squirrels are going to be used to them. So all I've done is put my truck in the, in the field about 20 metres from the feeder. It's quite windy today so I don't want to push the range out too far. And uh, I'm going to use the, the truck as a bit of a screen and shoot from the flatbed. Now before we get started, just to talk through the gear a little bit, and I'm going to review this rifle later in the programme, but very very quickly it is the brand new Brokok BRK Ghost. This is a 177 12 foot pound rifle and I'm using Daystate Sovereign pellets. It's the carbine version which is the shortest of the three different models as well. It's based on the Daystate Delta Wolf chassis but it's a mechanical rifle not, not an electronic one but it's humor air regulated, uh, side shot action, 13 shot magazine and I've been using it for a while and it's really accurate. On top is a, an MTC Optics uh, Cobra F1 scope and on top of and holding those all together is a set of sports match mounts which is what I've been using all my shooting life just about. So all I need now is a few squirrels to turn up. Well, that one looked like a youngster, actually. It came, but it came to the feeder pretty confidently, um, about 20, 25 meters away. And uh, yeah, dropped in nice and cleanly, so we're off to a good start. Well, that one was a little bit more cautious. Um, it came to the tree behind the feeder and hung around there. And I just got the impression he wasn't going to commit to the feeder. So I took him um, from the tree behind the feeder. I'm just starting to wondering if my sitting behind the truck tactic isn't quite as effective as I thought it would be, but it's too late now. Well that was another one, he came to the feeder 
but again he was quite cautious didn't actually get onto the peanuts at all um, I think I've pushed my luck now I don't think I'm going to get it get any more and the sun's starting to go down now so I'm going to go and pick up those three then head out, head over to the yard meet up with my mate Kev and see if we can shoot a few rats So we've come up to the main yard now, as I said before, there's lots of rats up here uh, for, for some reason this year. Now the gear is exactly the same, I'm still using the, the BRK Ghost uh, and the MTC Cobra F1 combination held on with sports match mounts. The only difference is I've put a PARD NV007 on the back so I can obviously shoot in the dark and I have actually put on an extra IR torch as well. Now my mate Kev is joining me as well and he's using a Huntsman Regal and he's also using a part NV007 as well. So Kev's going to be more static tonight. He's going to concentrate on the yard where he's going to try and shoot rats under, the, uh, under pallets and machines and around the farm buildings. I'm going to be more mobile, I'm going to rotate around several different spots, give each one 5 or 10 minutes before moving on. Well, that was a hectic start. Rats love the cover of a pallet. Got three in a row there and a couple more. There's always rats behind these containers here, shoot lots there. I thought I was going to get two then. Uh, I shot one and then just as I was looking around the scope a massive rat much closer to me popped out and I thought I was going to get a shot off but he disappeared behind some nettles. I 
to give him a second shot there, quick follow-up. And that's the beauty of a magazine-fed PCP, gives you really quick follow-up shots. And the BRK has got a nice short throw, mechanical throw to it. So uh, he didn't suffer unnecessarily there. I put him down within a couple of seconds of that first shot. Well, that's another one down. I've heard plenty of shots from Kev, so I'm guessing he's got a few, but I'll go and have a look. Well, that one was really close, probably no more than, I don't know, six or seven metres. So I had to give him a couple of dots of holdover. Well, that's another one I had to give a follow-up shot to. It's always worth keeping an eye on a rat once you've shot it because sometimes I've noticed they'll go down as if they're completely dead and then they'll leap around afterwards. Sometimes that's nerves, but sometimes you have to give them a second follow-up shot, which is what I had to do there. But he went down really cleanly, followed up nice and quickly, and he didn't suffer too much. Um, it's been a while uh, to get that rat, so I think we're going to call it a night now. And Kevin and I have got lots of rats to go and pick up. Thanks for watching.
Well that was a very long and productive day. Got a few squirrels in the late afternoon, then plenty of rats for Kev and I at night. The BRK Ghost performed thoughtlessly throughout, and next I'm going to take a much closer look at the rifle. Now we don't often get to do this on the show, we are actually launching this new rifle. It is the Brocock BRK Ghost being launched today, as I say, the 13th of October 2022. Now, you may have already spotted that it's based on the Daystate Delta Wolf chassis, this single monoblock chassis. But unlike the Delta Wolf, which is an, uh, an electronic rifle, the BRK Ghost is a mechanical rifle. It follows the Brocock modular design philosophy, so there are lots of different components on this that you can swap out for aftermarket versions. And in actual fact, PRS has bought out a range of different accessories that you can use. Now, there's three versions to this rifle. Um, they will cover all of the major calibers, 12 foot pounds and FAC. And in actual fact, at the highest FAC level, it's the most powerful Brocock ever to be launched. And it retails for between 1,390 and 1,550 pounds. So those three versions then, it starts off with the carbine, which is the shortest version of the BRK Ghost, which is this rifle here. It has a 360 mil barrel and a 300 cc air bottle. Now it's available in 12 foot pounds in 177 and 22, and there are also FAC versions available as well. And you can expect around about 320 shots from this bottle. The next version up is the, uh, the Carbine Plus, which has a slightly longer barrel, 430 millimeters, and also has a larger bottle of 480 cc. Again, 12 foot pounds in 22 and 177 with FAC models available as well. And from that bigger bottle, you'll get around about 450 shots. And then you have the HP or the high power model, which uh, has a 587 millimeter barrel. And again, the 450 cc bottle. And that's available in 177 and 22, but it also introduces the 0.25 and the 30 caliber uh, as, as well. Now, um, in 177, you're looking at about 31 foot pounds in the FAC model, 22 is about 65 foot pounds, 70 foot pounds for the 25, and an eye watering 100 foot pounds for the 30 caliber model. And in terms of weight, you're looking at around about 3.1 to 3.4 kgs, depending on which version you have. So we're going to look at the rifle from back to front. Uh, we're going to talk about the key features. We're going to look at how the magazine is loaded and inserted into the breech. We'll look at the air filling process as well. And then we'll put it on the range and see how it shoots. So the benefit of this Daystate Delta Wolf derived monoblock chassis is that unlike some other guns that rely on two or three pieces machined and then fitted together and relying on seals in between them to contain the air, obviously as a one piece block you have fewer, uh, fewer joins, fewer seals, and that means fewer potential leak points, which is obviously a good thing. The other benefit of a single block is that you have better rigidity, all of the stress points are, are eradicated, and overall that leads to more uh, to better accuracy. The BRK Ghost also contains a new balanced cross flow valve, which was actually developed for the Alpha Wolf. And it's just a very, very efficient way of using air, and especially in the FAC versions. And it also improves the shot count as well. And Gunsmiths will be pleased to know that it's a self-contained assembly unit, so it makes it a lot easier to work on as well. Now the butt section here, there's a little screw at the back here. If you slacken that off, you can move this shoulder piece up and down. And the cheek piece on top, again, you slacken off a couple of screws and you can move the cheek piece forward and backwards. And you can also reverse it so you have the slope part on this side, which is obviously better for left-handers. Now the combination of this adjustable cheek piece and the adjustable shoulder pad means that you can get really, really good um, scope to eye alignment. And both of these are interchangeable with PRS aftermarket pieces as well. So just forward of the shoulder pad, you have a 20 point micro power adjustment wheel. And you know, at 12 foot pounds, that's gonna enable you to make very fine incremental adjustments to the velocity and the power output so that you can fine tune um, your setup to suit the pellets that you're using. It works by adjusting the hammer spring tension. Now, in the high power models, you obviously have a bigger uh, power band to work with. And in actual fact, the 30 caliber version will adjust this between 70 foot pounds and 100 foot pounds. The in 2.2, you can adjust the output uh, between 65 and 49 pound, foot pounds. The 2.5 between 
uh, 56 and 70 foot pounds but at 177 the the adjustment isn't really going to make that much of a difference and that's largely due to the small caliber and the size of the transfer port the magazine is located in this part here this is the breech just here you can insert a magazine either from left or right and it is the uh, the brocock gated magazine design so you you open up a gate rotate the chambers and put pellets in and we'll show you that in a little in a little minute or two it takes 13 shots in 177 11 in 22 10 in 25 and 8 in 30 caliber and it comes with one magazine but if you buy a second you can put them in back to back uh, and you can double up your shot count and the magazine will either go in from the right or from the left again suiting you if you're a left-handed shooter it's also possible to change the caliber on the brocock brk ghost that is achieved by slackening off a little screw in here which releases the barrel and then if you buy a barrel kit you also get a new barrel a new pellet probe as well and a new magazine that you can swap the caliber over and it's a diy job it really is so the side lever is nice and mechanical it's a short throw as well gives you a really good sense of mechanical interaction with the rifle has this nice long drop down handle and the side lever itself can be swapped over to the left hand side obviously if you're a left hander or you want to cock with your left hand it makes it very easy to do it's a diy job only takes a few minutes the one thing i have noticed is that with the the cross bolt safety catch located here which is nice and far away from the trigger this drop down handle does kind of get in the way a little bit of you switching the safety catch off you push it from the right through to the left to make the gun live and that reveals a little red uh, spacer on the side here and then from the left to the right to make the gun safe now prs are also bringing out a shorter throw handle here which gets around that problem quite nicely the trigger itself is a brand new design specifically for this rifle two stage match style trigger uh, very adjustable for both uh, length of pull first and second stage and weight as well and you can also adjust the angle of this shoe as well to make it really comfortable for your shooting style the pistol grip uh, as standard has these sort of two finger contours here there's some stippling on the front and some more um, stippling on the back here now you can swap this out for an aftermarket prs or other aftermarket version as well but to be honest i found it really quite comfortable there's a little channel at the top here for your uh, for your trigger finger and another one on the side for your thumb and again it's completely ambidextrous so forward of the side lever are a couple of gauges on the right hand side this gauge gives you an indication of your overall fill pressure and obviously tells you when it's time to fill up again on the left hand side there's another gauge which gives you an indication of your regulator pressure now this rifle like all brocox is fitted with a humor air regulator as standard and on our 12 foot pound rifle it was set at around about 100 bar on the fac rifles there's an adjuster at the front here which obviously enables you to turn the regular regulator pressure up and down now forward of that are a couple of picatinny rails either side and one underneath as well you can obviously use those to attach a uh, an ir illuminator or a torch or a bipod something like that forward of that obviously is the bottle now the bottle is removable and you have a choice between a 300 cc or a 480 cc bottle it's a carbon wrapped uh, aluminium bottle now on top because don't forget this is based on the delta wolf chassis you have this almost full length rail running at the top here which enables you to move the cheek piece up and down but also enables you to move this uh, raised scope rail up and down as well so that you can get perfect um, eye relief on your scope even if you're using really really quite large uh, scopes and then finally the barrel is fully shrouded it's a carbon fiber shroud uh, which does a reasonable uh, job of of hushing down the muzzle report but if you remove a cap at the front here that will expose a half inch unf that you can put a silencer on which i've done here and to be honest if you're going to be using this for hunting you'll probably want to put a silencer on it so i think that's everything what we do now is we'll show you the magazine the air filling process as well and then finally we'll get to give it a shoot so filling the brk ghost with air is really really simple don't forget this is a, a day state delta wolf chassis so the filling uh, process is the same there's a little magnetic cap underneath here just pull that off to reveal the fill valve you simply attach your airline to the fill port the valve just make sure it's on there nice and firm and then give the brk ghost a 250 bar fill 
and then that will give you around about 320 shots from this 300cc bottle. So our test rifle is a 177 12 foot pound rifle. Now loading the magazine is nice and easy. First thing you need to do is just open this gate, it's held on with magnets, and then rotate the inner chambers round uh, clockwise as far as it will go, and then drop a pellet in the bottommost hole. As I said before, it takes 13 shots in 177, 11 in uh, 22, 10 in 25, and 8 in uh, 30 calibre. And it's just simply okay, you can put these pellets in in any order. Just keep dropping them in one after another. Like so. And then once you've put the last pellet in the magazine, just close that gate. And then this flat part of the gate goes in first. Flat part of the magazine goes in first with the back of the pellets facing you. So make sure the rifle's on safe. Pull back the side lever drop that magazine in and you're ready to go. Now set a target out at 30 meters. It's a little bit blowy, but let's see how we get on. Well, that's not too bad. Looked like four of the pellets went through one hole with one a little bit low and left. Could have been a dodgy pellet or a gust of wind or probably more likely me. Now, to be perfectly honest, there's no shortage of tactical style of bullpups on the market right now, but Brocock and Daystate have done more than just about any other manufacturer to establish the category. And I've been lucky enough to have the BRK Ghost for several weeks now. I've been taking it out hunting, from hide, from a vehicle, lying prone, stalking as well. And it's performed really, really well, I have to say. Nice to shoulder, very accurate, very compact as well. Lovely action to shoot with. And let's just say that I now firmly believe in ghosts. Thanks very much for joining us. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for. But please do tune in again in a fortnight's time when the air gun show will be back. And in the meantime, if you're not already a member of Basque, please do give some consideration to joining because it's an organisation that works really hard to protect and promote the sport we all love. Don't miss the award-winning Air Gun Shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today in shops or online.